Hey everyone, before we start the show, I just want to get some plugs out of the way. If you enjoy this podcast and you're into wrestling, check out the Nerds and Marks podcast or Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. If you're not getting your fill on movie and entertainment discussion, then check out the Entertainment Buffet podcast. If you want to dive into the world of video games, I highly recommend the Dark Cast by my friends over at DarkStation.com. Listen to them cover important topics and interview men and women from all over the industry. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shelved. Okay, so on the Monday episode, I said that today we were going to be talking about Halloween 3D. Well, we ran into a bit of a problem. Uh, My guest for this episode ended up getting very sick, uh, sore throat in particular, so doing a podcast was going to be pretty hard for him. So unfortunately, we are going to have to push that episode back, but don't worry, we are absolutely going to talk about Halloween 3D. Uh, it was a f- interesting script to read. Um, I'm a, I was a fan of the first Rob Zombie Halloween movies and seeing where the third one would have gone after the uh, less than well received second movie. Um, it's a really interesting story. So I needed something to, you know, fill this week's episode because I am not going to miss a week no matter what. So I thought I would take this time to kind of help uh, like let you learn more about myself. Because like I've been, I've been doing this podcast for a little while now, and I haven't really dived too much into my own personal likes, personal tastes. Um, I, I just there hasn't been enough me, you know, to let you know, like, hey, why should I even care to listen to this guy? So I thought just for this episode, we would uh, sit down and talk about my top ten favorite movies. But I also didn't want to just be, you know, talking to myself like I do in these intros. Um, so I got my wife, Amanda, to come back and we both sit around and talk about our top 10 movies. Um, now this was like an emergency last minute recording. So it was, it was recorded very late at night, uh, last night actually, as this goes up, um, after I got off, you know, a long shift from work. So, you know, we're a little tired in the recording. Um, but you know, I just, I just don't want to like leave you guys hanging with an episode to me. Consistency is very important. And no matter what, even if, my guest is unable to make it for medical reasons or whatever reason, I still want to put out an episode for you guys. Um, I was hoping to have more episodes banked just in case this happened, but we went through a really busy time at work and uh, coordinating recording times just didn't make it feasible for me to have the episodes I needed. So, But I I still think this is a fun episode. Um, It's something I haven't really covered yet. Uh, I definitely have mentioned some movies that I like, but... Haven't told you, like, here are my favorite movies. And it was actually really fun to do with Amanda as well, because, I mean, we're married. We obviously know each other. But if you asked me to name her top 10 movies, I could name her favorite movie. I knew it, I know it would be between one or two. But I couldn't tell you, like, nine other movies that she would put up there as, like, her Desert Island movies. And that's always kind of the way I look at this is um, what movies, like, if you're trapped on a desert island, what 10 movies would you want with you? Um, so I had already put together my list. So I asked her to put together a list last night as I was driving home and then, yeah, we just sat in the bed and recorded this episode and I think it's a lot of fun and it's very informative on both of us. I, I know she's been on the podcast only a little bit here, but I'm, I try to get her on as much as possible. So as much as it's getting to know me, I think it's fun to get to know her as well for everybody. But um, so yeah, this is going to be me and my wife's top 10 movies of all time. And I promise you we will have Halloween in the coming weeks. Um, I can give you a little spoiler. I already have the next script planned out as well, which is Castlevania based on the hit video game franchise. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading that one because that's one I've known about for years and always wanted to see happen and just kind of stumbled on the script recently and I'm so excited to read it even though I know the caliber involved does not bode well especially given the fact that it never got made but uh yeah so look for that one in the coming weeks I also ran a poll on Twitter uh asking you guys what the next script you'd want us to cover is and I gave you three options uh Speed Racer 
Uh, Batman versus Superman is a script from, I think, 2002. And uh, what was the third one? Uh, Alien versus Predator, The Hunt, which was an Alien versus Predator script written long before the Alien versus Predator movie that we got. And I have a feeling that it's it's based heavily off the comic and probably just follows the comic book storyline. I have no idea. I haven't read it, but that just that seems to be what it is. I know there was a lawsuit after the uh, actual Alien vs. Predator movie came out saying that he stole his idea for the movie and everything. But uh, I don't know much about that. Maybe I can find out more when we do that episode. But yeah, so actually that's not the episode we're going to do because everybody voted for Batman vs. Superman. And not everybody, actually. It was pretty close uh, between Alien vs. Predator and Batman v. Superman. Speed Racer did not get as many votes as I thought it would. Um, I don't know how people feel about Speed Racer. I love the Wachowski Speed Racer movie. I legitimately think it is great. It's uh, you. I've never seen a movie like it. And isn't that what we look for in movies is something unique and original? Um, I think that movie is a lot of fun. I saw it in theaters. I loved it. I continue to love it to this day. I think it's a highly underrated movie. Um, but yeah, the Speed Racer script written by J.J. Abrams, I thought it would get more attention. But that's definitely one we will do in the future. But everyone voted for Batman versus Superman. And I plan on doing more polls like this in the future. So if you want to be involved, you can follow me on Twitter at Shelved Podcast. And maybe if you have a script that is lying around, you don't know if I have it and you want to send it my way, or if you want to send us questions or comments or anything that we read on the Monday mini episodes, you can email them to our email at shelvedfilmpodcast at gmail.com. And if you want to find the scripts that we've already talked about or anything, you can find our Tumblr at shelvedfilmpodcast.tumblr.com. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to jump into today's episode then. Um, this is our top 10 movies. I really hope you guys enjoy. Okay. Do you have your list ready? I do. Okay. So I figured we'd... Did, did we... Did you narrow it down to 10, right? Yeah. So no honorable mentions? Nope. Okay. So I figure we'll just start from the bottom and sl- go back and forth. So I'll start your, from the bottom? Yeah. Okay. So we leave the number one up to the mystery. Okay. And then so we'll each do our number. Like I'll do 10, then you do 10, then I'll do nine, you do nine. Okay. So who wants to go first? You can go first. Me? Yeah. Okay, well, my number 10 is The Crow, which okay. is a movie I know you've never seen. Yeah, I've never seen it. But uh, I think you should watch it. I honestly, like, I know you've you've heard me talk a lot about it over the years, but I, th- I think it's one you should actually sit down and watch with me one time, because it is kind of a love story. Like, it's an action movie, but yeah. it's more of a love story, and it's just, it's really dark and really interesting. Yeah, I feel like I should see it. Yeah, a little loud. <laughs> yeah no i i mean it's it's based on a comic book but you would never even know it's based on a comic book and it's just really fucking good i just feel like it's like a classic i've heard and i've seen it yeah. like everywhere yeah i it, should see it <laughs> you should and i have it i have it on blu-ray so we should watch that uh so what's your number 10 date night date night okay i have not seen date night oh my gosh it's so funny that's uh steve carell and tina yeah Fair. and it takes a lot for me to I don't know. Find something. I find a movie funny because I can find like little bits of a movie funny. But this movie, I was like cracking up pretty much from start to end. I always heard it was really funny. Hilarious. And, like I, I think Channing Tatum has like a funny cameo in it. I always hear he's like a drug dealer or something. Maybe I I'm, haven't seen it in a while, and we don't own it. <laughs> yeah, we should just own that. It's got to be. We super don't own cheap. like a good chunk of my list. Really? Yeah. Uh, I think I own everything on my list. Yeah, I do. Well, we're going to have to correct that. <laughs> um, well, I saw, I, I think I saw your list. So I think we have the same number nine. And my number nine is The Silver Linings Playbook. Yes. Okay. So we bought this movie. I don't know if we saw it first or if we just bought it. But no, I remember. I think we saw it first. Yeah. So there, there was a time where we went over to my friend Joe's house. So we watched it at my house. Yes. And then th- that night. 
we mm. went over to Joe and Ariel's house and mm. we're like, we brought that movie and we watched it again. Okay. And then the next day we watched it again. Did we? Yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> and I just thought like, I just watched this movie three times within 24 hours and I could still totally watch right. it again. It's so powerful. It is. And it's, it's so, so well good. acted. Yes. Like the fact that she won an Oscar well for written, it. Well written, well acted. Well produced. And I it's, thought the way the movie looked was really good. Yeah, uh, David O. Russell. He's he's a great director. He's done a lot of good movies. Um, it's the movie that sold me on Bradley Cooper. Now he's kind of he become. He did a really like ugh, like job the scene well where he's reading so, the so book good. and he's just like, "What the fuck?" And then he's then yelling like, at his parents. The chemistry between him and Jennifer. Yeah, and him and Robert De Niro as his dad. Yeah. Like oh my the gosh. scene where Robert De Niro cries and stuff. Ugh, like that scene yes. gets me every time. I know. It's such a good movie. So good. Um, okay, so we'll move on to eight, which my number eight is The Wrestler. Oh, I love that movie. Which this is <laughs> this is one of those times where like... I really like that movie. Yeah, it was it was one of those times where like, oh, we're going to do a movie night every week. And it only <laughs> lasted one week. It always. <laughs> and that was the first movie we watched. And it was, it was pretty new to me at the time. Like I, I was hooked. I knew about the movie for a long time, but I hadn't seen it. It came out in 2008. And I saw it for the first time a few years ago mm-hmm. when we watched it. And it's just so fucking good. It is really it's, good. It's the same director who did Black Swan. So he's really good at kind of like dark, depressing movies. Um, but yeah, Mickey Rourke, it's the movie that like brought his career back. <laughs> and um, I really love the relationship between like him and his daughter. Yeah. Or I mean, I guess kind of failed relationship. But I mean, that's what I liked about it. It was so real. Yeah. And, and like, Marissa I like Tomei. movies like that. And Marissa Tomei is always amazing. <laughs> and she was really good as like his stripper girlfriend. <laughs> But yeah, I I mean, I love wrestling and the wrestler is, it's a really good portrayal of kind of the darker side of wrestling. And I'd love to see somebody make one from like a different perspective. Like there's like a couple wrestling comedy movies out there, but there's no like wrestling success story movies out there. I'd like to see somebody come at it from that angle. But the wrestler is definitely one of my favorite movies. I really liked it. So what do you got for number eight? The Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, that's so good. I didn't even think about that one. A bit long. Yeah, it's like three but hours. So good. I mean, he's notorious for every movie he makes is like three hours, but every movie is longer than the last one. Because he did the The Departed, which is also a three hour movie, but it's it's an amazing movie, and it took me so long to watch it just because I knew it was so long. And it was kind of for same- me. I realized that it was long, like after like I've seen it a couple times because yeah it was so good I was so drawn in that I didn't even realize that it was that long yeah and Leonardo DiCaprio is one of my favorite actors oh my god and he's just so fucking good in that movie blew it like out of the water I can't believe so he didn't win the Oscar for that movie yes I can't remember who won but he I mean he won for the Revenant and the Revenant was super great and he was really good in it but the fact that he didn't win for Wolf of Wall Street blew me away um oh shit i totally didn't have my number seven ready but uh (laughs) and then what's her name margot robbie that was like her introduction right yeah it was she's so good she was hot yeah (laughs) definitely she's what australian oh you know i don't know i think she is i don't know what she is i'm pretty sure she's australian it's just something about australians they're just extremely pretty um my number seven and i think it's the only comic book well like big comic book movie on my list but it's spider-man 2 um the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2, because I know now there's amazing Spider-Man 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Spider-Man's obviously my favorite superhero. Um, and Spider-Man 2 was in my opinion. I know a lot of people would say The Dark Knight, which to me, it was either going to be Spider-Man 2 or The Dark Knight. And I went Spider-Man 2 because I just love Spider-Man more than Batman. But it's always like right there with those two movies. But Spider-Man 2, I saw it in the theaters, and it's just one of those experiences where... I don't know if you've seen the movie, but um, there's like a scene where he has to stop a runaway train and he's like on the front of the train and he's just trying all these different ways to stop it. Mm-hmm. And when he finally does, it's just such a powerful moment. And like he loses his mask during the scene and like everybody in the train carries him in and he just saved their lives and they're all like not going to say who his identity is and anything. And it's just such a good movie, like some of the best action scenes and really cool. Uh, it's just it's. Honestly, it could have been higher on my list, but I just I love Spider Man too so goddamn much. <laughs> um, but what's your number seven? Step up. 
Step Out, really? Yeah. I, I, we That was one of the, I don't know if you remember, that was one of the first movies we saw on a date. I think it might have been the first movie we saw. Maybe. Because we saw it in theaters and you cried because you're, 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 a, you're, a, you're a girl. Yeah. <laughs> I was a dancer in high school and I just love dancing movies. And that was like Channing Tatum's first movie, right? Oh, I don't know. One of. I have no idea. First he, movie I saw him. He in. met his wife. Oh yeah, they are married. Uh, Jenna, the one, yeah. She was pretty. Yeah. That's it's actually not a bad movie. Like that's a totally a movie that could be written off as like, oh, it's just a chick flick. Yeah. But I enjoy Step Up. I didn't see any of the other ones, but you peep in my list. Um, kinda. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, Step Up. It's it's totally totally fine. Yeah, um, I like it. My number six is a, another movie we saw in theaters that I'm sure you don't even remember at all, but it's Tron Legacy. Oh, yeah. And I think it's one of the only movies me and you saw you in 3D. You loved that movie. I love that movie. And it's not Did like... Did we see that in 3D? Yes. Okay. And it was like your first time seeing like the new kind you know, of 3D. No, I thought it was really cool too. I mean, I wasn't like Yeah, obsessed, there was multiple times where you're like, whoa. Yeah, like, it was really cool. Because that was one of like when 3D kind of became big again because of Avatar, there were a lot of movies doing the cliche stuff of like, oh, let's like throw stuff at the screen and blah, blah, blah. And the thing about Tron is it was really really subtle with it the just 3D. seemed like they had fun making it. yeah so it was just fun watching for it. one it's one of the best looking movies i've ever seen the design yeah, of the really world cool. the design of the world and like the suits and everything yeah. it's incredible the soundtrack is one of the best like i still play it in my car to this day <laughs> it's one of the best soundtracks i've ever heard i wouldn't even mind watching that again it's it's incredible i love that movie yeah. and the the idea of like oh are they going to do a third one has been kind of up in the air forever and like because of all these comic book movies and Star Wars, because it's a Disney movie, Disney's kind of put it on hold. And I would give my left leg for a new Tron movie. But for now, Tron Legacy. I love it. Yeah, it was good. So what was this, number six for you? Yeah. What you got? Shawshank Redemption. That is, it's an amazing. It's. I love it. I always say... There's an argument to be made that Shawshank Redemption is the best movie ever made. How can you say that so fast? I just say it like really Shawshank slow. Redemption. Shawshank. Because it's a movie we talk about at work all the time. It's Frank's. For one, it's on TV like, constantly. Shawshank Redemption, like really slow. <laughs> yeah, I. Amazing. It's amazing. It's so good. Morgan Freeman, uh, Tim Robbins, I think, is the main guy. The main guy plays Andy. Guy. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's, it's a Stephen so King good. movie. It never would. I didn't know that for a really long time. I mean, it's classic. And yeah, it's one of the... I would. I always say the argument is you could argue for Shawshank being the greatest movie ever made and I would buy into it. It's incredible. So good. Oh my gosh. Uh, you could throw it on at any time and just watch right. the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so I think... Yeah, so this is the, the newest movie on my list going to my number five and that's Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, you yeah, you love that movie. Again, the sound... <laughs> And actually, I'm surprised I haven't even like seen it. The thing that makes this movie so amazing. Especially not your number one. It's it honestly should be because <laughs> I will say it's the best movie that's been made in like ten years. <laughs> and here's the thing: the reason Mad Max is so good is for one, they they create an incredible world and they tell you so much, but the movie says so little. There's so little dialogue in the movie. Mm -hmm. It's essentially a two hour car chase. But in that car chase, they tell you about the world. And for one, we we're in a, like it's 2017. Every time we go to the theater, we're seeing all these movies that are just crazy amounts of CGI effects mm -hmm. and just like you're basically looking at a bunch of actors on a green screen. Yeah. In this movie, they did everything for real. Every oh. car they blew up was real. Like they did a stunt where they like they had a head on collision with two vehicles and the guy, the stunt man who did it. His very first movie he ever worked on was the original Mad Max back in the 70s. And the very last movie he worked on was Mad Max Fury Road. And his last stunt was he was driving the semi and like head on into another vehicle. And it's just like you watch the movie and you just don't see movies that look like this anymore. Because the fact that mm -hmm. they're doing everything for real makes it stand out so much. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it came out this. It's, it's easier to appreciate. Yeah. Works it's like that. And like the editing is very special. And I guess he had his wife edit it because Mad Max is kind of like a, 
a male driven action movie but he wanted a woman's touch to it so he had his wife edit the movie that's cool and it really shows in the editing and it's it's the most uniquely edited movie i've ever seen they do a lot of like speed ramping where like it's kind of like speeding up the frames of the picture Mm -hmm. just to give it this really weird and unique look yeah and it's it's one of the best looking movies you've ever made it's so colorful which we live in a world where like post-apocalyptic movies are all super dark and gray Uh, and this is like he wanted it as colorful as possible but then he was so crazy that he also wanted a black and white version on the blu-ray which is also amazing but you put black and white yeah there's like a special blu-ray edition called the blood and chrome edition where uh-huh. they have like an extra black and white version so you oh, can interesting. and it's it's awesome like the movie it just because it's like a kind of wild west feel to the movie it totally works oh. and it's i guess they're talking about That's doing really interesting they're talking about doing it with the new wolverine movie too logan because it's kind of the same thing it's like a wild west feel so they're saying on the blu-ray it might come with a black and white version hmm. But, uh, so yeah, so there's my number five. What is yours? Fool's Russian. Again, another it's movie I've never seen. <laughs> I have loved it for years. And is this the Matthew one? Perry yeah, Matthew Summer. Perry. Yeah. And Which we own. Yes, of course. I'm obsessed with that movie. <laughs> yeah, I got it years. I think I was a teenager when I got it. I've had it for so long. I can't believe you've never made me watch this. You're not gonna like it. Really? Yeah, you don't it's think very so? much like a chick flick. But like we've seen tons of chick flicks that I've liked. Yeah. I even like some that you didn't like. Definitely, maybe. Oh yeah. Not Which I don't. Either. I don't think you hated. You just it just wasn't like anything yeah, it just special wasn't. for you. But yeah. to me, that has the added benefit of Ryan Reynolds, and I kind of like everything he does. <laughs> oh gosh, that reminds me of another movie I like. Oh, I mean, I we I could definitely. I've, the proposal. Uh, the proposal yeah. oh that was yeah that's a good one that's a good one that was yeah. fun the, i i ended up liking the proposal way more than i thought i would yeah me too um yeah I, we should watch fool's russian it's really good isn't it like he gets her pregnant or something yeah and then that's like oh we gotta have like a shotgun wedding or something well she didn't want to force him into a relationship it's like when he found out that she was pregnant he was like because he had like his own life oh okay and like they were kind of just a hookup yeah they like met each other in the line for the bathroom we should watch that i really like matthew perry and i love selma hayek yeah so i I think it was even pre-friends i think it might have been right at the beginning of friends okay i don't know when that movie came out friends started he looks so so young in it and well so does she but he looks like really really young it's got to be a late 90s early 2000s movie so it's probably early friends um well my number four is aliens which i know you've never seen didn't you ask me about that recently yeah because it's a the original so this is the sequel the original is called alien and then the second one is called aliens and the first one is kind of like a haunted house in space it's like they go to a planet and they bring an alien onto their ship and it's kind of like picking them off one by one it's kind of like a slasher movie okay and then the second one it's like oh well how do we how do we ramp it up you know and they basically just added an s on the title and it's like oh well now there's multiple and it's kind of like a war movie and it's like heavily inspired by like vietnam and stuff like that but it's james cameron the same director who did terminator and avatar and a bunch of other you know he's amazing he's one of the greatest directors of all time <laughs> um titanic um but it's it's such an amazing movie and it takes what the first one did and just turns it into one of the best action movies ever made and it is more of an action movie the first one's like a horror movie and the second one is just way more of an action movie but still kind of mixed with the horror and the aliens franchise it's like one of the best monster designs i've ever seen and i i love that series so much and it's the best one out of the series and there's a new one coming out in May that I so can't wait to see. <laughs> um, but what's your number four? Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing. I'm Again, obsessed. I'm obsessed. I, I don't know how I I've made it. it this far. I've never seen all of Dirty Dancing. I've seen parts of it. Uh, I think we were driving like so a good. couple weeks ago and I was like, what's the story to Dirty Dancing? Because I honestly didn't so know. Good. I love it so, so much. What's that actress's name? Um, oh, Gray. Fuck. Jennifer Gray. Jennifer Gray. Yeah. I... Uh, I can't believe that her nose job like ruined her career because she was so good. Like she's good in Dirty I Dancing. I literally don't know anything else that she was in. She was in Dirty Dancing. She was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. She played a sister. Oh my gosh! And yeah, she that was, was in. Her. She was in a movie called Red Dawn, which is like a classic '80s movie. It's like a war movie, but oh it's like gosh. Russia invades the U.S. 
and like I a didn't bunch even think that she was in the Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, she plays his sister, and she makes out with Charlie Sheen in that movie. Uh, yeah, she was. Yeah, the whole thing about she got a nose job and that like tanked her career. It's yeah, such but then bullshit. she won. Uh, was it that dancing show? Oh yeah, she did, didn't she? Yeah. Did she win, yeah. or was she just on it? No, she won it. That's awesome. She had the mirror ball. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, man. I can't, there's a lot more on your list that I have not seen. I mm-hmm. thought I would have seen all of them. Um, but moving on to my number three, which is a movie I know you know, but have not seen all of, is Fight Club. Yeah, that actually looks really, really good. So, you like every other movie by this director that you've seen. And the director is David Fincher. Um, yeah, I think... Yeah, he, he did yeah. Gone Girl. He did Panic Room. Why he, is Gone Girl not on my I list? I know. Gone Girl was in my honorable I mentions. I literally could not... <laughs> um, couldn't really think. Well, I think we can both honorable mention Gone Girl. We both love that movie. Love Um, that movie. He did The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Love that movie too. (laughs) He did Alien 3, which going back to my... I didn't think I really liked movies that much. Yeah. I I think Fight Club is... I mean, you know the the twist of the movie, which is kind of disappointing. But his directing style is one of... It's... He just makes a movie look so good. It draws you in. Yeah, I love. Oh, uh, that. the girl with the dragon tattoo. That was another one. Yes. He yeah, he makes amazing movies. He makes amazing movie looking movies. He mm-hmm. he's did House of Cards. He's the executive producer on that, and that show very much looks like a David Fincher movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Fight Club. I read the book six times in uh like two days, <laughs> like in high school. It's one of my favorite books. It's one of my favorite movies. Brad Pitt and Edward Norton are both incredible in the movie. Yeah. The music is a big part of like the, why I like that movie. I listen to the soundtrack quite a bit. But uh, I, that's one of those ones I've been trying to get you to watch for years. And why, Fight Club? Yeah. We watched like yeah, we half of it. it. We watched half of it like a long time ago, like the first two years in our relationship. We should definitely watch it. We then. should. I think you would like it. Because I liked all, it. I liked what I saw. Yeah. It's, it's right up your why. alley. I remember why we stopped. It's a really weird, messed up movie. But I love that. Yeah. So I think we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of movies I like to watch weird here. Messed up things. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so what's your number three? Catch me if you can. So good. Oh my gosh, it keeps you drawn in the whole time. He's hilarious, super smart. Just the way it was filmed. Ugh, so good. I think that was the movie that finally sold me on Leonardo DiCaprio. Because uh, early in his career, is like, oh, he's just that heartthrob guy. I also like Tom Hanks in it. Oh, I'm Tom not, Hanks is, I mean, he's really amazing in everything. I'm not a fan of Tom Hanks, what? but, yeah, I don't know. Forrest Gump? Well, I think I know. Big? Have you seen Big? Yeah. I love Big. Um, Tom Hanks is amazing in everything. He's okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is, like, probably my favorite awesome. actor working in the business today. Yeah. Um, yeah, Catch Me If You Can. It's just Steven Spielberg, so it's obviously well yeah. directed. Excuse me. But yeah, that was because for a long time, Leonardo DiCaprio was kind of just like, oh, he's that heartthrob like guy. It was it just suspenseful. It was funny. It and was it's sad. based on a true story. I, yeah, that too. And that yeah. always gets me. Yeah. I like those kind of Frank movies. Frank Abagnale Jr. was his name. Yeah. And now he ended, he ended up like working for the government Abagnale. afterwards, like kind of like yeah do, catching people doing what he did yeah yeah it's oh it's such a good movie. so good um so my number two is the only james bond movie on my list and is casino royale the first daniel craig james bond movie in my definition it is a perfect movie it is <laughs> it has everything you want action humor it's sexy because you know it's james bond's got to be sexy yeah um daniel craig is in my opinion the epitome of an actor playing James Bond. (laughs) Um, He totally fits the part from like the books and everything. Uh, Eva Green is a a great actress and her playing Vesper, the Bond girl, the one that like he falls in love with and kind of defines his character. It's a perfect movie. Like, and it's almost like two movies, (laughs) like halfway through it's like, Oh, we've kind of solved the mission. And then it's like, Oh, we have the continuation of the mission. Now we gotta go play poker and stop this guy. (laughs) Yeah. Um and I yeah I kind of this I forced you to watch this like last year yeah I think and it you, wasn't like, bad yeah no it's it's a little long like at the time yeah. 
I think when it came out, it was the longest Bond movie, and now the most recent one is the longest one. Mm-hmm. But like every time I watch it, it just moves quicker and quicker, and just like right from the opening scene, because like all Bond movies kind of follow a trend of like, oh, you do a cold open that's kind of unrelated to the movie, and then you have the theme song, and then you oh, get yeah, into the start movie. In black and white. Yeah, okay. and it shows how so like. I know you did. It was funny because you don't really know a lot about James Bond. So mm-hmm. as we were watching it, you're kind of like, like, what is he doing? Like, you didn't know he was a secret agent, basically. I didn't. Yeah. And um, so he's like, they call him like double O agents. So he's double O seven. And then the beginning of the movie, it shows him getting his double O rank because he's like talking to a guy in an office. and He's like, oh, well, to get a double O rank, you have to have two kills. And oh, so yeah, yeah. they're tell- they're telling the story of how he got his first kill, which was killing that guy's like informant because I guess he was like taking money under the table basically. Mm-hmm. And then he kills that guy in the office for his second kill to get his double O rank. And it's such an amazing opening. And like the all the Bond movies open with like a gun barrel sequence where it's like the, you know the James Bond theme plays as he walks across the screen, he turns and shoots the camera and the blood comes down. Mm-hmm. And they just they kind of worked it in to the story of the movie in like such an original way and it just like explodes into the theme song that is it's uh yeah just so hyped right from the beginning. Yeah, I remember that movie being pretty good. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Again, I would say it's a perfect movie. But uh what's your number 2? Aaron Brockovich. Aaron, so I finally own it. <laughs> We've this is like has been our white whale forever. <laughs> like every time we go to a store, we look for it, and then I bought it on Amazon and somehow got an Italian version, <laughs> yeah. and then I had to return that and get so the original close. Blu-ray. It's so far. Uh, and yeah, you finally got it, and you rewatched it recently, and it, yeah, it holds up apparently. Yes, I love it so much. I. I only saw part of it with you. Um, for one, I di- I totally forgot who it was directed by, which now I can't remember. I want to say it might be Martin Scorsese, who's an amazing director. I can't remember. It's between him and somebody else, and I'm not going to fact check it right now, but um, he's a really good director. I know that. And I kind of want to watch it again with you, because I only saw a little bit of it when you were watching it, and I was yeah. really liking it. It's so good. It's so interesting. I don't know. And again, based on a true story. Yeah, but that always helps. Yeah. <laughs> I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're you're definitely like when you watch movies, it's more like, oh, like you're interested in things that could actually happen. Yes. Like a horror movie wouldn't scare you if it's like mm. a monster, but when it's like a serial killer, that's yeah, Exactly. Like The Girl on the Train was a movie you really liked mm-hmm. because like, hey, that could happen. Right. And yeah, Aaron Brockovich did happen. Yeah. And I like Julia Roberts a lot. So. Yeah, that was something I learned about you. You're a huge Julia Roberts fan. Yeah. Um, I like I I don't hate her. I just I like it's like she's good, but I don't like love Julia Roberts. You know, there's I think Aaron Brockovich is one of the only movies that she's in that I'm like yeah she's like really good. Um, well actually, I I know what your number one is because I always know it's between these two movies. <laughs> um, but yeah, well I guess we'll get to that. Uh, do you have anything else to say about Pretty Woman or uh, fuck? <gasps> Just <laughs> about the Aaron Brockovich is killed. <laughs> about, about Aaron Brockovich is what I said. Um, I don't. Know, I just really liked it. Oh, there's a little. There was Law in it, and I always liked that. Yeah, as somebody who's like watched that. every episode of Law and Order SVU, you're you're a big fan of that. Well, that and just like I'm really drawn into movies that have like law into it. I always find that interesting. We were watching My Cousin Vinny at work the other day. Oh my gosh, that's a great movie too. Yes, it is. Marissa Tomei won an Oscar for that movie. (laughs) Who wins an Oscar for a comedy movie? I don't think that's ever happened before. Someone very... And that was her first movie. (laughs) That was her first movie. Or like one of her first. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she was amazing in it. But uh, uh, sorry, do we just want to do your number one since I spoiled it? (laughs) Pretty woman. Yeah. Yeah. I like Pretty Woman. I love actually I love it so much. We I saw it for the first time with you. Um on our vacation where we got engaged. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had I had, I had seen parts of Pretty Woman and oh my there's gosh, like I love it. there was things I was aware of just because it's so big in like the movie world and like pop culture and stuff. So good. Like the him slapping shut the necklace or whatever uh-huh. and her laugh and like just scenes from the movie I knew, but I saw it for the first time with you, and I I liked it. So good. I didn't think I would. Like I was kind of going into it like, all right, this is this is a movie. It's a classic for a yeah. reason. It's so I, 
Good. Has a great message. I will say I don't remember a lot of it now, but uh, I would totally watch it again. Like if you're like, hey, do you want to watch Pretty Woman? I'd be like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And then um, Julia Roberts. Yeah, Julia Roberts, Richard Gere, both really good in the movie. Yes. Yeah. The, I, so I said before, Aaron Brockovich was one of the only movies. She is very good in Pretty Woman. I would say like Aaron Brockovich, Pretty Woman, and like Ocean's Eleven are like three movies that I could point to, and she'd be like, "Yeah, she's really good in this." Mm. But honestly, I don't. I don't think I could name another Julia Roberts movie right now. You pray love. Did you see that? No, I didn't see it. I kind of want to see it, but I mean, it was like so overhyped when it first yeah. came out. People loved that movie. Right. It was kind of everywhere. Yeah. I mean, she did a lot of kind of like chick flicky stuff like Runaway Bride and um, My Best Friend's Wedding oh, or yeah, something. Oh, yeah, she did. Yeah. Which I saw My Best Friend's Wedding. I remember that being all right mm-hmm. for what it was. Um, but yeah, You Pray Love was huge. What is that movie with the girl from Will and Grace and she hires like the male escort? We saw this before. We did? Yeah. Oh, fuck. It's like a romantic comedy. She hires, She's going to like a friend's wedding or sister's oh, wedding or something. And she hires about. the male escort to be like her date because she doesn't want to look like a loser. Yeah. But then they like fall in love. And I'm pretty sure that male escort guy was the guy from Friends that like took over Rachel's job. Yes. Yeah. It was actually. Yes. Which then he was in um, Shameless. Yes. Yeah, he was. Oh, I can't remember the name of that movie. That was fun, though. I like that movie. That was a good movie. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure... That, don't you own that? Am I wrong in saying that? No, I don't own it. Oh. I, I, we must have rented it or something. Um, All right, but I guess we can get to my number one here so that we can get to bed. Um, I would normally just say Star Wars and include them all, but I have to pick one, so I'm saying The Empire Strikes Back. And I'm surprised. I thought Fight Club was going to be number one. Star Wars will always be my number one. Um, I would say like Casino Royale and Empire Strikes Back are kind of interchangeable depending on which one I saw recently. But Star Wars is just such a huge part of my childhood and part of my life. Like I watched them at my aunt's house for the first time and then I got like the special edition VHSs for Christmas Mm -hmm. and I wore out those tapes like... I had all the action figures. I played all the video games. I read all the books. Star Wars is just one of the like most important forms of entertainment in my life. And the Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars movie. And I, most Star Wars fans would agree. It's the middle, it's the dark middle chapter of the original trilogy. So it's like episode five. Um, It's, it's amazing. Uh, The story is so good. I like that it ends on a downer. Like the, the good guys lose at the end of the movie and it it just it's you know it sets up for the last one where you know they come back and win and everything but you just don't see that a lot in movies like nowadays a little more i think that was kind of like a post 9 11 thing where movies got a little more serious a little more realistic mm-hmm. but um you just didn't see that in like the late 70s early 80s it's like yeah here's a movie where the good guys got their ass kicked and the bad guys get away and it was it's just such a well done movie and it has it has some of the more classic moments from Star Wars, like the whole "I love you, I know" moment between Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher. And it has stormtroopers. Of course, well, I love them. you're a big fan of the stormtroopers. Love them. It introduced one of the most popular Star Wars characters, the bounty hunter Boba Fett, who my buddy has a Lego version tattoo on his arm. <laughs> Matt, you obviously know Matt, but uh, it's it's incredible. I could I could watch it. I haven't watched it in a while. I would really like to. Especially with all the new Star Wars stuff coming out right now. But The Empire Strikes Back always has a place in my heart. And you've never seen it. You've no. seen you've seen exactly two Star Wars movies and it was the two new ones and yeah. that is hilarious. <laughs> like you are so and I, I can't I can't remember which one it was, if it was episode seven or Rogue One, but we walked out of the theater and you were just like, You really like this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Yeah. Uh, I'm, one day I'll get you to watch the originals. It's so hard, though. I know you're never going to like them just because, like, at this point, they're so old. And if you don't have that love for them, I just, I don't know. <laughs> but The Empire Strikes Back is a fucking fantastic movie. I'd find you even hard-pressed to say it was terrible. I'm, I'm putting the challenge out there. You can give me that look all you want. 
Uh, but there's our top ten movies. Yeah, I mean, you just put Pretty Woman and Aaron Brockovich just anywhere. And it's so interesting that your top two are Julia Roberts movies. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, I I always know like Dirty Dancing is amazing. Yes, um, I always know that those two movies are going to be towards your top it's just a matter of which one is number one pretty woman's always number one really mm-hmm. i always feel like it's, it's like one of those situations where it's like oh if you watch aaron brockovich recently you might say aaron brockovich was number one no pretty woman's always gonna be number i was surprised not to see gone girl on your list i cannot believe i forgot <laughs> to put that on my list yeah is that is that one you would add on yeah like swap something else out no no it'd just be a solid number 11 uh, maybe step up. I mean, we've only seen it once. We haven't watched it again. We should really watch Date Night, though. It's so funny. I would love to. We should buy it's it. so funny. Next time we're out shopping, I've been we looking should look for it. I can ever find a really? version of it. Oh, I bet I could find it on Amazon for like super cheap. That's got to be like $10 or less. I love Steve Carell. I love Tina Fey. I'll watch anything with them. That's hilarious. Well, Tina Fey is amazing, so. Yeah. I actually really like that Sisters movie. Yeah, that was funny. We watched it again at work. Somebody threw it on. And I thought it was even funnier the second time. <laughs> um, those two together. Oh, yeah. Amy Poehler is Yeah. Too. And it had a lot of good, like, side characters from, like, Saturday Night Live and stuff like that. That was uh, John Cena in that movie is, like, the drug dealer. Yes. That was funny. Yeah, that was really good. Um, but all right well thank you for sitting with me yeah. and saving my podcast for this week <laughs> and uh talking about our top 10 movies yeah that's I, I love i love doing i'm lists. surprised I'm, I'm not a movie person like we did top 10 shows oh my gosh well maybe we'll do that next time oh that'd be fun i don't know if i, I have love 10. i'm way more tv yeah you movie. you watch a lot of series i, love I don't know if i have 10 tv shows i oh, I, sure I can name could, five i'm sure you can name 10 yeah I'd have to think about it. That OJ show might be on there now. That show was very good. But that's like a mini series. Yeah, I don't like know. That. But it is it is a show and it's good. But I mean, I know my number one. That's all I need. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll talk about that next time. But in the meantime, thank you for sitting yeah. here talking our top ten it favorite movies. I don't yeah. know a lot about movies, but yeah, I like doing lists. We should do some more lists. Yeah. All right. Well. Thank you for recording with me and everybody. Thanks for listening. Bye.